Okay, p students, we're going to get started with the screencast of the lecture I did today in class, introducing the Tolman model. Remember, the end goal is for you to be able to write a sentence in this format about the excerpt you're going to read tonight um, or tomorrow from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So you want to be able to annotate um, that text based on the components of the Tolman model and then write a final sentence using that specific format listed there. Um, real quick, make sure you take a second or two to read these announcements. Um, it will have an impact on your grade. Um, a note on number one, obviously you can't turn in the AP prep portfolio now, um, but it, you, it must be turned in within 24 hours of the deadline for you to be um, eligible to receive credit. Okay, so let's get started with the Tolman model. Um, the Toolman model allows the reader to identify the argumentative strategies an author employs to determine its effectiveness. So it's incredibly helpful, again, in doing two things. Number one, identifying the argumentative strategies an author uses. And number two, then figuring out, based on how um, the author uses those strategies, is the argument overall effective. It has six different components, three of which are considered the primary ones. There's the claim, which you can think about in terms of the overall thesis. What is the main argument? There's the grounds. The grounds is sort of like the main observation on which the claim is based. There's a warrant, which is a fancy way to say assumption. It captures the values that are assumed um, that justify the claim. There's the backing, which if you're thinking about an essay, you should consider like the quotations, the data, the evidence that you use in your essay to back up the claim um, and also the warrant. Then there's the rebuttal where you um, deal with the other side and then the qualifier um, where specifically you think about to what extent the claim is true. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the example. So here's a visual representation. I think grounds is cut off there. So this is the way to think about um, the Tolman model. So I'll give you an example down here. So my grounds are, my big observation, it's raining. It's raining leads me to the claim that I should take an umbrella. Within those two things, there's this underlining assumption that an umbrella will keep me dry, right? That's the assumption. Um, under here, um, if I had to use evidence for why an umbrella will keep me dry, I would say, well, umbrellas are waterproof. That covers the grounds, the warrant, the claim, and the backing. Now, a really good argument also has a rebuttal. So there's this um, counter that what if, well, what if the umbrella has a hole? Well, then you're right. Probably it will keep me dry if I take an umbrella. So that becomes the qualifier. The, it, it captures the extent to which the claim is true. For translation for your homework, and I'll do this a lot, give you examples of how this translates to a sentence the way you're expected to format it in your homework. So you see, because it's raining, that's the grounds, therefore I should take an umbrella, that's the claim, since it will keep me dry, that's the warrant, on account of it being waterproof, that's the backing, that's like the specific evidence. Okay, let's do this with um, one of the examples that we went over today in class. This is a famous quotation by Lloyd Benston um, at the Vice Presidential Debate in 1988, and he said to Dan Quayle, Senator, I served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. So just like with the umbrella example, you have a claim. The overall claim is that you're no Jack Kennedy. The grounds, so the observation on which this claim is based, is that Lloyd Benson served with Jack Kennedy. He knew him. He was a friend of his. The assumption, what's not being said, is that Jack Kennedy was a great man, but Lloyd Benson is not. Okay, let's up the ante here. Let's look at this political cartoon um, from this morning. So here, this political cartoon you see is titled The Great Gatsby Society. You see a very rich man on one side in a suit. I'm assuming he's rich because of the way that he's dressed. He's a little bit haughty based on the way that he's drawn. And then on the opposite side, you see sort of a representative of the working class. You know that because of his fast food attire. So he's obviously going off to work. Between them, you see a gap that seems to be building, sort of like a crack after an earthquake. 
and it says jobs outsourcing. We talked about the background knowledge needed to understand what that means, but essentially jobs outsourcing is when jobs that used to belong somewhere get put somewhere else. In this specific case, it's the business people are taking jobs that regular people used to do in the US and sending them off to other places, leaving these people to find other types of jobs. From their comments, you see that the rich man is saying, I just can't see this ever whitening wage gap you're going on about old sport. Old sport being a reference to The Great Gatsby, um, the book that is alluded to in the title. Then the working class representative replies, sorry, no time to explain it to you. I have to get to my other job at the Quickie Mart old sport. Okay, so the first thing I need to think about is what's the author's overall argument? What is the author saying or arguing and trying to communicate to the readers. And what I came up with is the rich do not understand the role they play in creating class disparity. So if that's the overall argument, I now need to ask myself, well, what observation did the author make that led to that argument? And based on the political cartoon, I see the gap. So I'm going to assume that that's the grounds. There's a huge gap between the rich and the working class. Then what are the warrants? What's the assumption being made? The assumption being made is that the rich don't really have a good understanding of how their impact, their practices impact those with less means. The last one we're going to go over because we're going to save, even though the um, rebuttal and qualifier is there, we're going to save those for later. I now need to look at the political cartoon and think about, well, what evidence is the author using to communicate this claim that the rich are sort of oblivious? And a couple of pieces of evidence are from the outsourcing, from the jobs outsourcing, um, because that makes it so those they used to employ have to resort to other measures to make ends meet. How do I know they have to resort to other measures? Well, first, he's dressed like a fast food worker, but in his quote, in his quote, he's saying that he has to go to the quickie mark. So those are the other means this worker has to resort to. I also know, based on their conversation, that the working class people don't actually have any time to advocate for their rights because they're too busy working. So those are the two pieces of evidence that justify that the rich have no understanding of their practices and lead us to our ultimate thesis that they just don't understand. Okay, Let's, this is how we would translate to your homework. So based on all that work, based on my little annotations that I did by answering those questions, I can now say, because there's a huge gap between the rich and the working class, so that's my um, my grounds, right? My overall observation. Therefore, the rich do not understand the role they play in creating the gap. That's the claim. Since they are not aware of their responsibility to the working class, that's the assumption. On account of their practices with job sources, job sourcing and the working class's inability to advocate, so that becomes the evidence. We're going to try it with one more. So. This is one that you discussed in your groups today, but just to make sure that you got it. So again, we're only going to talk about questions one through four. So here you see a political cartoon, another one. This time you see that there's this rich couple. I'm inferring so from their fur coats, the cigar, look at the fancy suit, um, the fancy jewelry. They're walking into what's uh, titled the Wo World Economic Forum. Forum is like a fancy way to say conference that's taking place in Davos, Switzerland. So it's sort of like an international one. Inside, you see many more rich people being served food or their coats being hung. And the rich lady, as she's walking in, says, there are so many sessions, I can't decide between hunger and poverty. So I'm thinking claim, grounds, warrants, backing. Okay. So overall argument, major observation on which this is based, assumptions made um, is specifically about what's being valued or not, and then specific evidence that justifies all of that. So here's what I came up with. For number one, what's the claim? The rich are too oblivious to help the poor. They just really don't know what's going on. They think that helping the poor is a matter of attending conferences as opposed to doing something more concrete. What are the grounds? What's the big observation? that they, the rich are surrounding themselves with others like them. So the rich, instead of talking to the poor about how to help them, they talk to other rich people. Um, the assumption being made, the warrant, the rich do not value interacting with the poor. They'd rather interact with each other. The backing, the specific evidence, is they attend conferences 
that treat the poor like a form of entertainment, which you can see here in the um, comment that the lady is making. This then leads me to my homework translation. So this is how I came up with it. Because the rich only surround themselves with those like them. So again, that's the, that's the grounds. So if you look back, if I did a good job annotating, this translates. So there's my grounds. Therefore, the rich are too oblivious to help the poor. That's the overall claim. Since they do not value interacting with the poor, that's the assumption that's being made by the cartoon, on account of attending conferences that treat helping the poor like a form of entertainment. And so that becomes the evidence presented in the political cartoon. All right. So now for homework, you need to be able to annotate the excerpt from Rich Dad Poor Dad at the very minimum, identifying the claim, grounds, warrant, and backing in your annotations. And then you need to write a sentence in the same form. You can't see it there because it got um, cut off, but in the same form um, that I've done now uh, three different times. So because of the grounds, therefore the claim, since the warrant, on account of the backing. Okay, good luck.